flick through a range of uh, slides, which I think are going to describe to you the process we've been through in terms of um, thinking about the uh, and delivering on the KTP project. I've got to get this to work on. Okay. What were the first thing that we needed, to, we feel we wanted to think about were the range of interconnected drivers that have informed our approach to making impact evaluation work for us. And one of the first things was uh, our board. We've got two members of the NCA board here today. And what they were asking me for was, what evidence do you have that whatever we're doing is working? They were really interested in knowing what difference we were making. The board also wanted to identify community needs. They wanted to understand the strategic and the operational imperatives behind uh, what we were planning to do as well as what we were doing. Funders and commissioners, they were also wanting robust evidence of impact. So they were a pressure, a driver to us in actually getting together uh, impact measurement tools in terms of our community development, we wanted to be able to demonstrate whether or not we were making a difference for the community, what social capital we were creating, and what contribution that social capital was made, what we, contribution we were making to the community. And we were also wanting to demonstrate that we were a community-rooted organisation. Were we really rooted in the community or not? What community reach did we have? We wanted to be able to demonstrate value, not only the impact of what we were doing, but also value for money, to be able to demonstrate to ourselves as an organisation and to funders that we were, we had an edge over other organisations. We, again, for, in order to be able to have an edge on other organisations, we needed to show that we had the skills within the organisation to be able to uh, deliver on, 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 on the projects that we were uh, planning and we wanted also to be able to show and demonstrate that we were committed to quality both in project delivery and in project development. We wanted to be able to show that we were adding value to what we were doing, realising the potential of whatever project we were delivering. And we wanted, crucially, to be able to show that we were delivering on the vision for the organisation as a whole. So, from the initial aspiration of what we actually had as a KTP project, and we've already said that you know, there was a struggle in the initial uh, stages of getting from the point of discussions with the university and with KTP, it was getting it to be the truly transformational project that it has become. We think that it was dependent on several key factors. It was getting the right associate, the, 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 the person that Im Imogen was talking about right at the beginning this morning, this person who could bridge between the academic and, and, and the university. It was obviously about getting university engagement, absolutely. We, were, we needed to be able to work with the university, have people that we could work with and that who could engage with us. And we needed also to be able to, find, to fit it with the vision of NCDA, not only to, um, to, to, cre to, to work on the vision for NCDA, but also to develop the vision for NCDA within, within this uh, within all the changed thinking that has happened over the last three years. We needed to get the NCDA staff on board. People were inevitably very, very um, reluctant at first. Everybody is driven by their own, uh, you know, their own things. They've got, they've got their own work to do every day. They're saying, why on earth do we have to go to extra meetings? What on earth are we going to do? How are we going to fit all these things in? and the NCDA staff needed to be brought on board. We needed to be able to describe things to the NCDA board, and for, to that end, we created a new subcommittee, the Impact and Project Development Subcommittee, where we were able to discuss and develop those ideas. 
And crucially, as part of the project, we needed to engage the users of our services. So all of those factors had to be pulled together from the initial idea we had to create this transformation project that it has become. So what have been the impacts for NCDA? There's no doubt, and Imogen said it from the university time, there's no doubt that over the last three years we've, we've had to be able to put time into it, time to work with our service users, time in training, time in additional subcommittees, time in additional meetings. We've had to develop our internal processes. We've actually had to be able to embed through a subcommittee and in all project areas all the work that's been done. So there's been a lot of change happened internally to make it possible for us to say that we are embedding and making sustainable the work that we've done. One of the things we've had to do is be able to take the long view. We've had to be able to have a bit of a leap of faith, I suppose, in some respects, from the initial project idea, but actually have a long view for the organisation that this was truly a direction of travel that we wanted to take. And we had to be able to see that there were a whole set of interim measures that we were achieving in order to be able to do that. So we had, for example, at, over the last three years, we've had about 23 action learning sets, small, short life groups for staff and service users working on small <coughs> elements of this project, achieving them and then moving on. So it's been a slow process of progression, accumulating accumulating the, the eventual vision. Money. Money, there is, a, there is a cost. There has been a cost element to NCDA for this project. I mean, we have had to find some of the resources to fund the KTD project, and that has to be, has, that had to be found for the, last, for the last three years. We've had to have the idea and embed the idea that we could grow the project that we've been able to say, yes, this is what we wanted to do initially, and it was much smaller in its initial vision, but then we've, been, we've had to be able as an organisation to, to, to take and run with the baton. We're now thinking about sustainability. How do we actually create sustainability for the future of the work that we do, but also by embedding what we're doing now in what staff are doing, and in initially staff were very reluctant to get involved in this. I mean, there's no doubt about it, we've had to look to the sustainability of the products we're creating. And we've all had to embrace change as, as an organisation. So what have been the impacts for beneficiaries? What we hear is, and I'm reporting here what we hear is, that it, uh, the people who use our services value the feedback that, that we are saying to them, we, val we value the feedback that we're getting. That we've taken on board, absolutely as an organisation, a view that we call, you say, we do. So people are telling us this is what, what is happening, this is what the service means for them, and we're, and we're doing it. We're absolutely committed to involving the community. I said in the film that was uh, we had at the beginning of today, it's all about us working on community needs. We're not just putting on programs that are about what um, funders would require. This is about community involvement in what we're doing. And it's about building NCDA. Sorry. So what are my reflections on these three years? The most challenging bit of it has been that it's about maintaining the strategic direction when you're looking at a very long view, how we get all the incremental steps together to actually get to that end. But that's also been the most satisfying thing, pulling the strands together over the last three years, pulling those pieces together which have actually made this work and which have created something which we believe will be sustainable in the longer term. And I think after today, we'll see that it has a, a broader impact. I have 
four questions that I think we'll be discussing in our in, a, in our in our groups. So, how do delivery staff fit the additional work? Very practical. How on earth do you fit all this additional work into service delivery in a proportionate way, without taking over? How do we mean, maintain the enthusiasm and engagement of the people, our, the people who are benefiting from our services? How do we how, how do we effectively feed back on impact uh, to to our beneficiaries? And how do we feed back the additional impact to funders, not just the things that they want reporting on, but the the, the additional impact to funders?